Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So this is the sixth video in my Python Intermediate Tutorials. In this today's video, I'm going to be talking about collections and more specifically counter, which is a, a part of the collections module. So what is the collections module? Pretty much it's a built in module in Python that's going to allow us to have different kinds of data types so that we can store information, sort through information um, and do some cool things. These are extremely useful. Um, the second I found out about them, I started using them all the time because a lot of the stuff that would usually take you a few for loops or a few lines, um, you can do in one line or two lines with these uh, new collection types. So I just want to first off and start by saying that in Python, it has something called containers. Um, so containers are pretty much uh, a data type or an object that's going to store multiple objects. So it's like a container, like a list is an example of a container, uh, a set is an example of a container, a dictionary, and a tuple as well. Um, these are the four main ones with Python, and in the collections module, they introduce five new ones, um, which are similar to these, but they all have their own methods um, and cool things you can do with them. So the one I'm going to talk about today is counter, uh, but the other ones are listed here, dq, named tuple, ordered dictionary, and default dictionary. You can kind of get an idea of what some of them are by reading them, um, but let's get into the counter one for right now. Okay, so first thing we need to do whenever we're using collections is we need to import it. Um, so this first line up here is unnecessary, but I just did that to show you. And we're going to import counter from collections so we can reference it directly without doing collections.counter. Okay, so I'm just going to start by creating a new counter. So I'm going to say C equals counter. Um, now, when you create a new counter, what goes in here as the arguments um, can just be any... Uh, I want to say like collection data type or any uh, container. So for example, you put a dictionary, set, um, tuple, you can put a list, uh, and you can also do something which is weird with these keywords. And I'll show you that in a second. So for example, I could create a counter like this by just putting a string and it's going to count all the letters in the string and return them to me. And I'll show you that in a second. I could create another counter where in here I have a list. So it's like A, A, B, C, and we'll just do one more, C like that. And I could put a dictionary, so I could do something like this. I'll just make a small one so we don't take too long. Uh, oops, like that, B2. And you can also put uh, these keywords, which is what I was talking about. And it's kind of cool because you don't have to type out or like use a for loop to create a list like this. Um, I could do something like, oops, cats equals four dogs equals seven like that and I can continue on with keywords um, and I don't have to actually put the quotation marks around these I can just name them exactly what they are so let's just go ahead and start printing some of these to the screen to see what actually happens um, when I create a new counter object and what does that look like in Python so we'll just print all these um, just give us an idea of what they really are okay so there we go so it says we have a counter object uh, it is its own object it's not like a list or dictionary it's its own thing um, it says a we have two uh, I believe this is an L, we have two, G1, D1, um, and then same thing here, A, B, C, dogs, cats. So you can see it looks like a dictionary in terms of it has a key value pair, but it works a little bit differently. So now if we want to reference um, a specific item, which is typically what we want to do from our counter, we can just put the square brackets and put the uh, name of that item or the key. So in this case, I'm going to put cats. And you can see now we get four as that's the direct value related to cats. Um, and something cool with this counter and a reason why I use it specifically is I can put an item in here um, that doesn't exist in the counter. It doesn't have a key set and that will actually not return an error like might happen with the dictionary. So for example, I put a key like, I don't know, let's see, pet. Then it just gives me zero instead of returning an error. So if I were to do this with a dictionary, let's say D equals like, I don't know, uh, cat two, and then I tried to do d pet like this and get the value. Uh, we get an error uh, because pet the key pet does not exist in our uh, in our dictionary. Okay, so let's move on to some more methods and uh, why these are extremely useful. Um, so we can see here um, one of the methods that we can use is we can actually just list all of the elements out. And this is useful if you wanna like sum something. Um, so let's just say list and then C dot elements like that. And what this is gonna do, if I print it to the screen, is it's simply just gonna print out all of well, the elements in our counter. So we say we cats, 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 dogs, dogs, dogs like that. Um, 
and since here we said cats equals four dogs equals seven um then it prints it out like in a made list with that many uh indices which can sometimes be useful i'm just going to change this to be named d so that we can now print out the one like this with the a1 b2 and you can see we get a b b um like so i if i do the same thing i'll change this to e we print it again um then again we get another list that just has all of the elements in it so that's one useful method uh c dot elements Another useful element uh, or method, sorry, is most common. Now this one by far is probably one of the most useful ones. Um, and you can simply just type this. So the name of your counter object and then dot most underscore common. And then in the brackets here, you're gonna put how many elements you want. So if you wanted to find the number one most common element, you'd put one. If you wanted to find two, you put two. So let's print this to the screen and see what we get. Like so. And you can see we get the most common elements are A and C. And it actually also returns us a count of those elements as well. So it says A, which occurs two times, and C, which occurs two times. And that's returned to us in a tuple or a tuple, however you want to call it, uh, which is really useful. Okay, so now another one we're going to use. Uh, I'm just going to copy something I have open here just to save us a bit of time in terms of creating counter objects. So I'm going to delete all this. And I'm going to make uh, one counter, which is equal to A uh, or C. And then I'm just making a list, which is uh, D and it's A, B, B, C, like this. Okay, so you can actually do something um, as well with these counter objects. You can subtract counts from them uh, from using other iterable objects, or you can add uh, like the count of objects to them. So one method is called subtract, oops, like this. And it does pretty much exactly what it uh, it says so we're going to take this counter object it, this has to be called on a counter object by the way um, it says with these counts and we're going to subtract whatever the counts are from d of similar items so we have one a two b's and a c so if i do this and i print just to the screen we should let's do a quick calculation here get a is equal to three b is equal to zero c is zero and d is still negative two uh none oh it's because i didn't convert this to a list sorry about that Let's do this maybe. None type object is not iterable. All right, just give me a second, guys. There is a way that we can. Oh, it's because we're doing this. So C dot subtract doesn't actually return anything. We just have to print C after we call that method. Okay, so there we go. And we do get um, what we had there. Okay, so yeah, C is negative one because zero minus one gives us negative one. Um, and there we are. So it is working exactly like it should. Okay, the next one is update. So I'll run this now, c.update. And this is the exact same thing as subtract, except it's simply just gonna add the counts of whatever iterable object you give it. So in this case, I'm gonna put D. And note here that I'm using a list, but I could be using like a dictionary, I could be using another counter object, um, I could be using a set, uh, a tuple, uh, whatever you wanna say there, it's still going to uh, like work for update. So let's see here. And oh, I didn't print C. Let's do that. And there we go. So we went originally, so we changed our counter by subtracting and then we just updated it by adding. So it should be the same as our original counter, which it is. Okay, so that's working well. The next one that I'm gonna talk about now is clear. Um, this one does pretty much what it states. Uh, so if you see here, we do c.clear and then I'll print c to the screen. And all it's gonna do is just remove all of the counts. So we now have an empty counter object that we can use to count something else, to add to, to subtract, so on. Okay, so that's it for the methods pretty well. There's one or two more, but I don't find them very useful, so I'm not gonna show them right now. Um, but there's something cool that you can do with these counters, and there's a few operations that are applied to them. So you can actually add counters using the plus sign. So you do like this, C plus D. Um, you can do C minus D, you can subtract them, you can add them. And then the two operations which you wouldn't necessarily uh, know intuitively is you can do something called intersection and union of counters. So let's just first show what happens when I add these two counters together. So C plus D, oops, and this needs to be a counter now because this isn't gonna work if it's a list. There we go, so make that a counter and I'll print C minus D. And then we'll print another one after that. So if I add them and subtract them, um, you can see that uh, it works like this. So when I add them, we get the counts added up like this. And when we subtract, uh, we get it subtracted as well. 
Now, some of you might be uh, wondering here why we don't have the elements B, C, or D shown in our counter. Uh, and that is because if the element count is less than zero or equal to zero, it's not going to be shown in our counter when we do these operations by adding and subtracting. So because of that, um, you can see like with the, the why that happened because B is two here and we have two B's so that created zero, C is already zero and D was negative two. So when we subtracted, it's not going to bother showing those uh, in our new counter. Now the next operations that we can do is something called union and um, intersection. So the first one, I guess what I'm going to show is intersection. And the way that you can think of intersection is like the minimum elements in each of the uh, the lists. So we're going to have C intersecting with D. Um, in this case, we should get A equals 1, B equals 2, and C equals 0, D equals negative 2. So let's just see if this works. And there we go. We get B is 2, A is 1, and we're not showing the other ones again because they um, like they're equal to 0 or less than zero, so they're not being shown. And this is the and sign is what I'm doing to do this intersection between the counters. The next one that we can do is called union. And this one you can think of as the max elements shown in each of our counters. Um, so it's going to take a equal to four because that's our max. It's going to take b equal to two because that's the max between here. C equals one. And then again, it shouldn't be showing us d because that's negative two. So there we go, we get A is 4, B is 2, and C is 1. So this is pretty much going through, looking at the counters, and just taking the maximum element, whereas before, when we did our intersection, it's taking the minimum shown of uh, all those elements. So that has pretty much been it for this video and counters uh, from the collections. There's a few things that you can do with them, as well a few other methods. If you want to learn about those, uh, just go to... Just look up collections counter Python. Uh, you can read through the documentation and you can look at some more examples that I didn't show here specifically. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.